And now your state game and fish department brings you Outdoor Oklahoma. Outdoor Oklahoma is a public service feature prepared and presented to further acquaint Oklahomans with the state's wildlife resources, hunting and fishing, and the activities of the Oklahoma Game and Fish Department. And now Outdoor Oklahoma with Orville Allard as your host. Hello there and welcome to the Outdoor Oklahoma program. Well, Oklahoma's hunting and trapping season on fur-bearing animals opened December the 1st and continues through January the 31st. Fur bearers are the little animals that provide the fur and fur trimmings for ladies' coats, such as this. The little animals which may be hunted or trapped during this two-month period include badger, civet cat, gray fox, mink, muskrat, opossum, raccoon, red fox, and skunk. There is no open season on beaver or otter. Fur bearers are usually caught in one of two ways, either with dogs or traps, although steel traps such as this one are more commonly used. The trap is usually concealed on a path or near the den of a fur bearer, but for demonstration purposes, this trap is being set up on the floor of an Oklahoma City sporting goods store. When the fur bearer accidentally steps in the trap, he trips the trigger and the jaws spring shut holding him securely, just as this trap caught and held the stick. Here is a larger and stronger trap being set. It's a number two victor and has double springs. Hey, fellow, watch that finger. Double spring traps such as this are illegal for trapping fur bearers, but they may be used to catch predators such as wolves, coyotes, or bobcats. One of Oklahoma's most common fur-bearing animals is the skunk. Fur-bearers are hunted primarily for their pelts. There was a time when raw skunk fur was worth around $3.50, but nowadays you're lucky if you can sell one for a dollar. The blacker the skunk, the more he is worth. Furriers remove the white fur in making neck pieces, and since this fellow has very little white in his makeup, he is one of the better grades. Even more common than the skunk is the opossum, or just plain possum as most folks call him. His pelt once brought a dollar or more on the raw fur market. Now, however, he's worth only about 10 or 15 cents, since he has long-haired fur which is no longer stylish. It went out of style about 10 or 12 years ago, and since that time, few fur hunters have bothered to trap or hunt Mr. Possum. That, of course, has been to the possum's liking, and now he is more plentiful than ever in Oklahoma. If possums keep on raising young and folks won't catch them, there's no telling how many possums there may be in Oklahoma someday. However, fur buyers are still buying a few of them, and they're being kept in New York storage houses in hopes that someday possum fur will again be back in style. Fox, like the opossum, has long-haired fur, and consequently fox furs are not in the height of fashion. So, as one fur buyer expressed it, fox fur is worth almost nothing. However, the fox, especially the red fox, is a mighty sporting animal, and it takes a good pack of dogs to run him to his lair. The fox's number one value these days is the sport he affords. The raccoon is another animal whose pelt will bring about one dollar this year. Raw coon pelts did bring about seven dollars and fifty cents each back in the days when college boys wore raccoon coats. But the popularity of Davy Crockett hats among the younger generation will have little effect on the price of coon skins, since most of the hats are made from inexpensive furs. However, old Mr. Coon is a very sporting animal too and quite a fighter, 
and his chief value to the sportsmen of Oklahoma is in the chase. This caged critter is a mink, and from a monetary point of view, he is Oklahoma's number one fur bearer. The average wild mink will bring from $15 to $20. There's a reason for that, too. He's a short-furred animal, and short furs are tops in popularity with American women. And since there's a shortage of wild mink, the price will remain high. The only fur bearer that even comes close to a mink in popularity is the muskrat. And raw muskrat pelts will range in value this year from 90 cents to $1.40. A successful amateur trapper is Dave Roberts, who is also superintendent of the Shawnee City Lake. He specializes in the trapping of muskrats. And as an amateur, Roberts is limited by state game laws to not more than 20 traps. Mr. Roberts does his muskrat trapping in and along fish culture ponds below the dam at the Shawnee City Lake. He traps them for two reasons, because muskrats dig tunnels and culture pond dams and dikes, causing them to leak and because muskrats have a value on the raw fur market. So for Mr. Roberts, trapping muskrats is both a part of his regular job as lake superintendent and an outdoor hobby that provides him with a source of extra income. Right now, Roberts is hunting a new place to set traps. Among the cattails, he finds evidence of muskrats. Cattails are not only food to the muskrat, but also material for building homes. This shows muskrat cuttings. Muskrats like to climb on logs, little islands and the like, out in the water. So Roberts is building a stationary raft or platform on which he will place his traps. Later, probably sometime during the night, because that's when muskrats are most active, this is what Mr. Roberts hopes will happen. A muskrat will climb on the board to rest or eat some food he has carried there with him. In moving around, the muskrat will step in a moss-covered steel trap, trip the trigger, and get caught by one foot. This will panic the muskrat. He will dive into the water, attempting to get away. But unfortunately for the muskrat, the trap will be securely fastened by a chain to the platform. And in the muskrat's frantic efforts to escape, the chain will become wrapped around the stake supporting the grooved board. And this, plus the weight of the trap, will cause the muskrat to drown, since they are lung-breathing animals and can remain underwater only a very short time. Roberts also set some traps underwater. This trap is one that he set on a previous trip to the pond. It has been sprung, so he resets it. Places it back into a well-worn muskrat runner path, and then he covers the trap with moss to camouflage it. This is the entrance to a muskrat den. In swampy areas, muskrats build little rounded houses like the beaver, but most Oklahoma muskrats just dig their homes in a bank like this one. Roberts has set a trap at the entrance to this den. And since the trap hasn't been sprung, he places it back in the water and then throws some moss on it. Roberts has one more trap to check, which is set in the water at the edge of a growth of cattails. Using a stick with a hook on it, Roberts pulls his trap from the water and finds he's caught a muskrat. Like the beaver, muskrats have flat, scaly tails. 
but the muskrat's tail is flattened vertically instead of horizontally. He averages 17 to 25 inches in length and weighs two to three and one half pounds. He has small eyes, short ears, and heavy fur. After the muskrat pelt has been removed from the animal, it's pulled on a drying board. Any flesh or fat that stuck to the skin as it was pulled off is cut away. Here is the finished product, all ready to be hung in the garage with a half dozen others where they can be kept cool and dry until sold to a raw fur buyer. And this is what happens to some Oklahoma fur-bearing animals that get caught. They find their way to a furrier who makes them into ladies' coats. This is a mink coat in the making. The many seams on the underside of the coat indicate the great amount of work that a furrier must do in cutting and stitching an expensive fur coat. Here you see a natural mink pelt, one that has been stripped. Stripping is done by cutting the pelt into tiny strips and re-sewing them to give the pelt greater length. And here is the finished product, a mink coat. This coat is valued at $7,500, and 60 wild mink skins were used to make it. This mink bolero being modeled was made with 25 mink pelts and is valued at $1,200. Here is a coat made of muskrat fur. It took 75 muskrat skins to make this coat, valued at $400. On the divan is a sheared raccoon coat, valued at $500. College girls like this inexpensive coat. Most trapping done in Oklahoma is done by farm boys, and this is the type of ferment they must buy. This license is for the resident amateur trapper who uses 20 traps or less. The license costs $1.25. Professional Oklahoma trappers must buy this type of license. It costs $50. If fur bearers are hunted with dog or gun, only a regular hunting license is needed. Fur buyers are required to buy a license too. The resident fee is $15 and the non-resident fee $50. All fur buyers are required to keep a daily record of the pelts they buy and must make periodic reports on these purchases to the Oklahoma Game and Fish Department. Hunters and trappers must dispose of their furs by February 10th each year. Well, that gives you an idea as to what the hunting and trapping season on fur-bearing animals is about. But this little folder can tell you a whole lot more about rules and regulations. If you would like a copy of this leaflet, Write the Oklahoma Game and Fish Department, and a copy will be mailed you free of charge. Well, folks, this concludes our program for today. We'll be back at the same time on this same station again next week. Be with us, won't you? Outdoor Oklahoma is a public service feature prepared and presented by the Oklahoma Game and Fish Department. Be with us at this same time next week when your state game and fish department again brings you Outdoor Oklahoma.